changevictoria.org and just in light of the, the last question here I want to ask you in terms of jobs and the, re, the, the pipeline debacle um, where would you stand in terms of helping our economy with the reindustrialization of hemp products in Canada just being that it could be used for petrol plant based petroleum products we can use it to for carpet we can create the chassis of an automobile with hemp but they've outlawed hemp for the last 60 years or so if you support hemp industrialization in Canada, what steps would you take to to grow this avenue for, for new uh, uh, income? Okay, well, it, it happens that it, it, my party policy, and I personally support the legalization, taxation, and regulation of cannabis, period. At the same time, the non-THC uh, hemp has tremendous potential for non-tree paper, for all kinds of materials from fabric to, as you say, to, to chassis. And it, it, for parts of Canada's uh, agricultural sector that's really, that particularly tobacco farmers, southern Ontario tobacco fields, hemp is a perfect substitution crop as more and more farmers want to get off growing tobacco and on to growing non-THC hemp. The, the kind of uh, reefer madness laws that make no sense make it very hard to also have the industrial hemp activity taking place. So I'm entirely in favor of uh, uh, getting rid of silly laws, and that would also allow us to have law enforcement agents, uh, agencies uh, prioritize their work in law enforcement on things that actually are a threat to public safety and security. And it's not saying that in any blanket way that I know your question was about non-THC hemp, but in terms of cannabis, Firstly, I think there are health risks with cannabis, and we should not be promoting uh, the use of cannabis. But in the same way, we don't promote the use of tobacco, but it's legal, and we don't promote excess alcohol consumption, but it's legal. And we should treat cannabis exactly the same way. So that would, I think if we regulate, legalize, and tax cannabis at the same time that we start exploring all the various ways that hemp can be used as part of um, a new industrial sector, it'll all get a lot more straightforward. Yes, you can yell back there. I've been hearing a lot of rhetoric about uh, nuclear weapons in the Middle East and the proliferation of them and all the rest of it. And I'm not hearing anything about nuclear power plants, which Canada is great for producing. We've got over 400 worldwide leaking. We had Chernobyl. We had Three Mile Island. Now we've got Fukushima that nobody ever talks about that is melting down. And totally destroying the Pacific Ocean, Japan, and soon the west coast of Canada. And what has Harper done? He shut down scientists, he's muffled them, he shut down our radiation uh, detectors. What are you doing to turn this around so the people of Canada are made aware of what is really going on to our planet? Well, I, well first of all, I'm glad you asked the question. Uh, nuclear proliferation for weapons is also very closely tied to the spread of what's so-called peaceful nuclear energy. And this is a position uh, when Canada used to have an ambassador for nuclear disarmament within the government of Canada. It was a wonderful former progressive conservative MP named Doug Roach. Now, how many of you know of Douglas Roach? Anybody who's followed nuclear disarmament issues will know him. And he's made this point very strongly that any push for more uh, nuclear energy plants inevitably leads to greater risk of nuclear proliferation for weapons and of course the risks of terrorist acquisition of nuclear materials. So I favor, and the Green Party favors, the phase out and shutdown of nuclear energy uh, globally. In terms of Fukushima, what have I done? I did put out, uh, we're the only I'm the only MP, I think, that's put out any press releases at all. Not that press releases really help, goodness knows, but because they don't get any coverage once we put them out. But I did call for, at the time Fukushima was happening, for public monitoring, for public information in Canada. Canadians were getting much less information than U.S. citizens. And when it became apparent that the groundwater leakage from Fukushima was still reaching the Pacific at alarming levels, I wrote to John Baird, Minister of Foreign Affairs, to Gail Shea, Minister of Fisheries, and to Rana Ambrose, Minister for Health, 
to and oh, to Jerry Ritz, Minister for Agriculture, to ask for monitoring of foodstuffs, particularly seafood products that could have been swimming through the waters in Japan, to ensure that if there was any that there was radiation monitoring and information provided to Canadians. Um, a range, they're all, all of the things that I, I haven't yet, I double checked because Fukushima has been coming up at other town halls, so I double checked with my office in Ottawa. I haven't had any response from any of the ministers to whom I wrote back in August about what we were seeing happening with Fukushima. But the letters and the efforts are on the website. I'm grateful that it gets raised in the town halls because then when I go back to Parliament, I can say, look, people in my community want to know what is this government doing? I will tell you that in terms of my background and knowledge on radiation, I don't think that we need to panic about our food now. I was very concerned, at the time Fukushima was happening, uh, there were a lot of airborne radiation that could have been affecting milk and dairy products. We weren't monitoring for it, we should have been, we should have been providing some cautionary advice to Canadians. Right now, I think there's reason to be concerned uh, in terms of seafood products, but we don't have any, looking at what they're getting from the United States, it still doesn't look as though we have any reason to be panicking. So don't panic, but we have a right to information and we're not getting it, so I'll keep pushing for it.